Hey everybody, this is Larry. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let me know how you're doing this problem. I'm going to solve it live right about now. Okay, 437, path sum 3. You're given a binary tree which each node contains an integer value. Find the number of paths that sums to a given value. The path does not need to start or end at the root or a leaf, but it must go downwards. Okay, the tree has, so the end has less than 1,000 nodes, and each of the values between negative 2 and 1 million. Okay, so off the back of the envelope, notice that uh, a million times a 1,000 is a billion, so we could still f use 32-bit ints, uh, though in Python it doesn't matter as much, but I just wanted to point it out. Okay. So let's look at the example. So this is the example, and sum is equal to eight. So and it could begin on any node. Okay. So I think let's start by solving the case where we start from the root to to any path, right? Um, yeah. So let's let's try that. So let, let's try, yeah. Let's just go, let's go deficit or go recursion. So basically the idea behind how I want to solve this recursion is that we keep a running count uh, of the current sum. And then as we do the recursion uh, with a deficit search, we, any time that the current count is equal to the target sum, uh, then we just increment by one, right? Okay, so yeah, let's just do that for search on the node on a current sum, and if current sum is equal to sum, we set count, create, um, yeah, we increment count, otherwise we, oh, we also want to do if node is none, we return. Do we do that after the count? Uh, should be okay. So now we do node left uh, current sum plus uh, the node value. Also do the same to the right node. And then now we just have to do, uh, well, our original hypothesis uh, what we built this for is to build it so that we start the root and the current sum is equal to zero, right? Um, let's just check this real quick. Also, we have to call it with this non-local on count. Um, yeah, let's check this real quick. So now we're only solving the problem where we start from the root and going all the cases down. Uh, so the answer is zero because I guess there's actually no case. But let's try, say, seven because 10 minus 3 is 7. Um, just to see if we get at least one answer, just to validate our code a little bit. Uh, oh, there's two answers. Hmm. Is that true? Oh, because so that's why you practice. Uh, so we definitely want to, if the node is none, then we want to return. Um, just to make sure that, but then now we return zero. So I think we just need to do something like this to keep track of the one in count. Now, yep, so it returns one as predicted. So now, uh, what is the complexity of this, right? Well, f the complexity of this is that it is linear. So because for each node that we put in the input, we, we look at the left and the right, and starting from the root of the tree, we only look at all node once, right? So, okay. So that part I think should be okay because we look at each node once and each node, for each node, we only do a constant number of operations, so this is all of n, right? But it's the wrong answer, right? It's not quite the right answer. What we want to do then is, well, we, we find the answer for root, we can just, try it to, st we can try to start from every point. Like, okay, now let's start from negative three and then do a similar thing where, okay, let's now pretend negative three is the root of a new tree and then and then do uh, the depth of search that way, right? 
so you may want so let's kind of do that let's call it uh, I don't know Kickstarter let's just call it starter DFS uh, of a note right and now we can recursively count each node as the as the root of their tree by just doing a depth of search again uh, so now uh, if node is none we return otherwise we kick off uh, oh, oops. we do a depth of search from this node starting from zero because in the beginning there's zero and then now we kick off the starting node on the left and then the right also a recursion so this it's a little bit hard to visualize because there's two levels of recursion but now we just have to kick it off and then there we go so yeah uh, okay let's submit real quick I saw this eight months ago so I don't remember the solution I think I did it in a funky way so that's good uh, one time's a little bit slower than last time but memories are better hmm, I guess uh, okay so yeah so what is the complexity of this right uh, so this should be easier to understand but in terms of complexity well for each DFS we, we showed that this is O of n right well how um, how many times do we call starter of DFS so this is O of n well we call, for each node in starter DFS we only call it once right because well, by definition, really, we do a recursion and we process each node once on the starter DFS. So that means that there are n inputs to this, each input taking O of n. So in total, this is an n square algorithm. Um, and since n is a thousand, this is fast enough. And this is basically how we do this problem. Uh, for, yeah, so let's see. In terms of space, what is the space complexity? Well, the space is linear because uh, for each uh, for each call to the depth of search, each it creates a stack record, and this can be if you if you look at um, a binary tree that is essentially a linked list, uh, the depth of search would have the depth of search of n levels of recursion, which means that it takes up n uh, or o of n in space um, but you may wonder why is this not n square space because we have another loop right but actually even even if you do a start I mean and this is a little bit hand wavy but if your tree is the linked list then this can only gives you O of n space and and this cause this other thing which is also O of n space which is you know hand wavy but so in that case the worst case would be O of n stack space, so you're like n calls into the starter DFS, and then you call this thing, which is another n, so it's O of two n, which is O of n space. So that's those are, that's the analysis for this problem for both space and time. Uh, in terms of interviews, uh, I mean this is a, a classic recursion problem, so definitely urge you to practice it. Um, in terms of competitive programming, th this is a little bit trickier. Uh, than usual, both for competitive and interview, in that you have to think about this in two different, like instead of one recursive step, which is already hard enough, uh, there's two recursive steps, right? Uh, that cause, uh, and not only the two recursions, there's one recursion that causes another recursion. So that it's a little bit hard to visualize and a little bit hard to uh, come up with the complexity, but hopefully I did help you visualize that. And it does come up a bit, these kind of uh, tricky things. And it's about doing the brute force thing in a reasonable way. Uh, cool. That's all I have for this problem. Uh, let me know what you think. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Bye-bye. <laughs>